Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new, my name is Lesejo Ramela, aka Lesejo Ranko. And on this channel, it's all about learning, growth, and contribution. So this video is solely going to focus on overcoming the challenges that we spoke about last week. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend that you take a pause right here and you go back and you watch that video. So basically, this is going to be a four part um, series, episode, whatever it is that you might call it, where in the first video we spoke about the challenges that accounting students face. This video is going to focus on overcoming these challenges and on the third video we're going to talk about the different learning styles that different students have and then finally we are going to be talking about any study tips that I think are necessary for you to have in your goodie bag when you are accounting students in order for you to be successful in your journey. Now the first improvement or the first way to overcome these challenges now i'm not going to go in order of the video last week but again i'm going to tailor it and hopefully if you wrap all of this up it's going to make sense to you but the first thing that i feel like is very important is number one you need to seek clarification aka you need to consult now if you're in high school do you have this thing about you that if I'm going through something, I don't want to ask a question in front of my peers because they might laugh at me. Like we have this thing where we confuse the way we need to study versus what we think people think we know versus what we assume this person thinks about me. So you need to somehow stomach some courage, some bravery. If you're not strong enough to do it in a classroom setting, I would suggest that during break, go speak to your teacher ask them to clarify something that you probably didn't understand now if you're also an accounting student that's in university what i see students normally used to do and i'm guilty of this too i was a student i know i did this a lot i would walk into the lecture room and think that the lecturer was supposed to put the accounting inside of me and if i didn't get it within that first hour obviously i'll start panicking i'm like am I supposed to be doing this? Like, this is not making sense. But knowing what I know now is that in university, it is important to do some self-study, some self-reading before you get into a lecture room so that if you have any underlying questions, they're probably going to be asked or answered in that lecture room. And even if you have follow-up questions, you need to come up and have some courage to put your hand up and literally ask the lecturer to clarify something. Now, if you're also not comfortable in that, there are tutorials that take place that are very intimate, very small, very, I feel like comfortable enough for you to actually ask questions. And I would recommend whether you're in a lecture room or whether you're in a tutorial, I always sat in front. Now guys, I don't know what was going on with me in university. Maybe I was going through like a bad, bad phase, but I used to have blonde hair, short blonde hair in university. I used to wear crop tops guys i used to be the girl that i think that i am <laughs> you know and i feel like it's because in university it's like you still want to live your best life you still want to look like a barbie doll you still want to look pretty you know and so sitting at the back made sense because people would naturally see me but honestly it was not helping my academic cause so i i i was that girl that was like with blonde hair and a crop top sitting in france because i understood the assignment at the end of the day i knew I went to university to study even though the spirit of university was trying to get a hold of me i knew that i came there to study and so when i sat in front i needed that knowledge to land fresh on me <laughs> because as it left the lecturer's mouth as it left the tutor's mouth it was landing on me first before it got diluted at the back and a lot of students get really distracted when they are sitting at the back it's not like the lecturer didn't say anything it's because you're probably hearing whispers here and there you're probably looking around the room you're probably like thinking about things that you shouldn't be thinking about because you are so distracted so one way to get more clarity i guess is to sit in front so that it's just one-on-one -on -one time that you're actually listening to what this person is telling you and it really did help me i'm not just saying this because i used to be a tutor i might just be saying that but i i'm i vouch I was also on the other side so even though i was a tutor the students that generally sat in front understood what was going on the people that were sitting in the middle they were coming but they weren't there the people at the back yo guys i don't want to lie to you and then at the end they would come to you last minute and like they would ask you questions that you covered in the first tutorial they in tutorial number nine <laughs> number nine but they're coming asking you a question about something that you clarified earlier on and 
I understand that sometimes you might not get something at the first go, but that's why it's important that you see clarification and that you consult. The second thing that I think is very important is to practice 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 and when I say practice it would be an injustice to say how to practice now you need to practice as regularly as possible now if you're one person that thinks that practicing one question is going to get you through the wake-up call is coming it might not have happened at the time of this video but it's coming because accounting for me is like a test of consistency do you get what i mean like if you feel like oh this semester is going quite well or this term is going quite well second term might be shaky third term might go well the last term when it actually matters might also go shaky because there's inconsistencies in how you're studying and one thing about accounting is that it's very progressive right you start off with really fundamentals these are the building blocks of what we are trying to say and then it piles up it piles up it piles up and then before you know it you are in this technical complexity that you never saw coming not because you weren't prepared but because you weren't consistent in how you were studying it always starts with the fundamental blocks and i also realized that some students when they are really struggling in accounting is not because of the really difficult um, sections it's because of the fact that they don't understand the underlying they don't understand the mere basics so you need to get into the habit of practicing as regularly as possible so that you can get the maximum benefit when you are in a lecture a tutorial or any classroom another important thing that I need to speak on is using all the resources that you have available to you whether that be in the lecture room guys some lecturers literally come to school to lecture and then they go home so it means that you have two hours to get their attention right so if you are sitting in front ask as many questions as possible with your tutors right ask them as many questions ask them as many questions as you have available use youtube like this is a great platform for you if you don't understand something and you're very nervous to ask them guys it's a real thing to have guababa in class <laughs> and to not want to ask that question because your crush is sitting there at the back and you're like oh that guy if only if only i could ask this question but he's going to know that i'm dumb <laughs> that's how i think guys i'm not saying that it's you i'm saying that's how i thought so some questions i was very nervous about asking in class so i would wait until the very end to ask the questions but i understood that that resource was available my tutor was there my lecturer was there if it was a question that i felt i feel like they did cover and i really was not paying attention because i was thinking about the next party that i was going to I would go on youtube i would check okay what is an asset go to the conceptual framework and check on the internet guys and it's amazing that now in 2023 we have ai we have chat gbt we have youtube we have these types of channels that come and try to give you practical examples of things so whatever resource that you can get your hands on your textbooks right you will find that sometimes in lecture in lectures the lecturers don't necessarily always use the textbook they make slides this is their understanding they've summarized it with the intent and understanding that you have done some self-reading before you walk in there so when you look at the slides it's not a complete detail of what you should know it's not the syllabus granted the syllabus is in here in a textbook in the green books the red books whatever the color may be in the legislation it doesn't matter but the full context of where your problem might be might lie in the textbook so do yourself a favor open your textbook and revise whatever's on the slides and make sure there's consistency between what you heard in the classroom versus what's in the textbook or whatever resource that you will be using another thing that i love doing especially when i was in university now i should admit that in high school um i don't know in high school this made me very nervous because in high school i was very athletic right so a lot of my afternoons were around practicing netball or i was probably running somewhere or i was doing debate or i was in public speaking there was just a lot of other extracurriculum things that i was doing so for me i didn't do I, I didn't see the need for study groups when i was in high school but when i was in university the study groups were a game changer now for me i'm one person that i can convince myself of anything you can hear man when i speak i sound like i know what i'm saying so in my mind i'm right i know that what i'm saying makes sense but it might not be the complete picture and so getting into study groups allowed me to have different perspectives from different people i remember we used to talk a lot about like ifris 9 because at that time 
it was still kind of not new but it was still like such a complex thing to wrap your head around even our lecturers used to tell us all the time that obviously since the standard had changed and now that it was supposed to be something that was going to be implemented it was also a challenge to teach it to us and so we were all learning together so ifrs 9 was something that if you didn't speak about it and you learned it on your own you were in the ghetto so those study groups actually helped something like management accounting costing costing was such a difficult thing for me personally to understand what was going on but i had this really smart friend that understood costing it's like she slept and it came out of her mouth and i didn't understand but because she had explained it to me it was much easier for me to understand costing principles it's the same thing with tax i am not like the best at tax and i keep emphasizing it and i need to stop saying that because whenever i see tax I, I i cringe and so i need to change the narrative in my mind sorry i'm going on a tangent but tax is one of those subjects that i feel like even after i heard it from a lecturer i needed to hear it from somebody else because it was not registering on the first go so it's very important that you get different perspectives from different people and study groups don't need to be this thing that you see on movies where you guys are like in a circle kumbaya trying to go through chapter one let's go no it doesn't have to look like that you guys can do your own thing come together and ask each other questions and bounce off ideas it also helps when you are a trainee and you are studying for itc or you are studying for apc especially when you are in those study groups because the nature of apc is that you work in groups so that you can get different perspectives but at the end of the day the exam is going to test your own competence but because you understood that your own knowledge might not be a complete picture you can get different perspectives from your deep from your group members and it can translate in giving you a well-rounded well-informed decision and answer at the end of the day the other thing that I would like to mention is I've mentioned this as a challenge, but I'm going to mention it as an improvement is time management. Now time management from an improvement point of view is if I give you an example, I mentioned that I was very busy man. When I was in high school, I was busy when I was in university. I did a lot of sports. I tried to be um, in a lot of like social settings because I feed off the energy of other people so I I liked being connected so it meant that I needed to be very disciplined in my time management so using schedules is very important there is absolutely no reason why you should find out this week that next week you are writing a test how <laughs> that cannot be your story especially when you are studying accounting you need to know exactly when those test dates are going to be when the exam dates were are going to be you need to know when assignments are due so that you can plan out your time because time management goes hand in hand with practicing regularly if you don't know your commitments if you don't know when your netball match is going to be or your soccer match is going to be or your hockey match is going to be then it's going to be difficult to like implement this practice regularly with time management so having a schedule knowing from January up until your course is finished, what is going to fall in where is going to also give you a sense of peace. It's going to give you a sense of confidence because of the fact that you know, okay, on, on Tuesday at this time, this means that I'm going to do this question and I'm going to do this past paper and I'm going to make sure that I have all my summaries gathered. I'm going to make sure that I use, um, a bookshelf for example this is something that i've mentioned before in my previous uh, videos that when i passed my cta year on the second attempt is because i was more organized because i understood time management time management goes hand in hand with being organized i had a schedule i had a calendar i had a bookshelf i had different books um i used different colors for different subjects so there's just something about knowing your time that gives you a confidence in the accounting journey and i hope you don't take this lightly when i say it's important to know when every test date is going to be so that you have enough time to practice past papers to practice questions because accounting is not theoretical trust me it might appear that way in the very beginning when they give you all these standards where you have all these massive books and you're thinking how am i going to get through all of this it's a facade the real the real issue the real test the real challenge comes in actually implementing all those books into questions and understanding 
why those books are in place especially those b appendices that have all those examples because you're going to leverage a lot of your understanding a lot of your application from those books so it's important to not just focus on the theory in accounting and to practice as much as possible and that can only be effective if you have proper time management skills the last thing that i think is important is that sometimes accounting just does not click like you might do all the right things you might self-study before a lecture you might listen in the lecture you might go to your tutorials do your tutorials but there is just something about this standard that just it does not want to make sense you know and sometimes you might go through all the resources that you need and because you're doing it by yourself you're just not getting it it might be a situation that you need one-on-one -on -one time so you might need to seek tutoring whether it is privately or whether it's um, with whatever university facilities that they may have but sometimes you also need those one-on-ones because I remember for example I keep talking about Ifris mine because it gave me so much trauma when I did my first attempt at CTA like I just did not understand what was going on with the first mind I tried to do the mind maps I tried to do the study groups guys I spoke about it there were times where I felt like I get it and then when the test comes I'm like Lizero you lied to yourself <laughs> You deceived yourself. You don't understand what's going on because the way they asked the question threw me so off that it made me realize it's not even about the question. It's because I didn't understand the fundamentals. And so all the questions used to trip me up, even though I thought I knew. I used to teach people if it's mine. <laughs> I used to be the person that my friends came to to explain if it's mine. But the minute it came in a test setting, it was not happening and so I now know that I probably should have gone through like the private route the one-on-one -on -one route just so that I can understand what is going on and what don't I understand so it might be a call for you to get a private tutor or even ask your your tutor as a group to give you some one-on-one -on -one time where they can explain to you something that you probably don't understand but this is not an exhaustive list of all the ways to improve the challenges but it gives you like a well-rounded view to know that accounting is not like a one-size-fits-all kind of situation you need to understand what are the challenges that you are facing and where do i need to improve and again this is all about accountability guys accounting again cannot be put in you it has to come from you and you need to put in the necessary time the necessary consistency that it deserves the necessary respect the necessary attitude because you might be doing everything right but because your attitude around accounting oh my gosh it's difficult oh my gosh it's boring oh my gosh it's only for the smart people that attitude might be the reason why you're not doing well so this might be a situation where you need to do a attitude adjustment and i don't know where that came from maybe the spirit just landed but for somebody that's listening on the other side that maybe your attitude is something that needs to change and if you are more welcoming to the subject you are more understanding of why the principles are there and also ask yourself like what do i want to learn from this there are so many soft skills that you can get from accounting i don't think that like my ability to express myself the way i'm expressing myself right now is by chance it's because of the consistency and the discipline that came with how the study techniques i used or the way in which i approached my accounting degree helped me become a well-rounded person outside my books outside the workplace you know what i mean but I don't want to labor this any longer. I hope to see you next week when we discuss the different learning styles. And maybe this can also help you understand what it is that you specifically, that you uniquely need to apply in your accounting journey. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, to comment, to share, and to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.